Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli wa nusallimu ala rasulih al-kareem wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan ila yawm ad-din. Faqad qala jalla wa ala fi al-Qur'an al-kareem wal-Furqan al-Hamid a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. اقترب للناس حسابهم وهم في غفلة معرضون وعن عمران بن حسين رضي الله تعالى عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول ما بين خلق آدم إلى قيام الساعة أمر أكبر من الدجال رواه مسلم سرق الله مولانا العظيم وسرق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب إشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا يسر ولا تعسر وتم من الخير وبك نستعين يا فتاح رب زدني علما اللهم صل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كله مي. My dear respected brothers and sisters, we praise and we thank Almighty Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, who has given us the tawfiq to come in this holy house on Sayyid al Ayyam, the chief of all days. We praise and we thank Almighty Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the Creator of the years. The creator of the months, the creator of the days. These will also be in Jannah, also insha'Allah in the life to come. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has created the days. And from amongst all the days, Yawm al Jum'ah is the chief and it is the best of all days. In the hadith, Nabi alayhi salatu was salam has mentioned, Fihi khuliqa Adam. In this day, Adam alayhi salatu was salam was created. On this day, Adam alayhi salatu was salam was sent down from the Jannah, the paradise. And on this day, resurrection will take place. And the commentators have mentioned why is it that the Nabi alayhi salatu was salam was expounding upon the virtues of Yawm al Jum'ah. And he mentioned it is a day wherein Adam alayhi salatu was salam was sent down from the Jannah. Because our father Adam alayhi salatu was salam, he used to live in the paradise and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he told them not to eat from a tree and he ate from the tree and on account of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on account of that mistake, he sent him down on the earth and hence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had a plan that you and I would be on the face of the earth and this is the point my dear respected brothers and sisters that alhamdulillah thumma alhamdulillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has a plan and sometimes he sees something as good and he considers it good and he deems it to be good but we do not see that there may be goodness in it and some people will think Adam alayhi salatu was salam coming down from heaven was not a good thing and just as we mentioned in a class this was the very sad argument that took place between Musa alayhi salatu was salam and Adam alayhi salatu was salam. That, oh Adam, it is on account of your mistake, we are down here on the face of the earth. And remember, we are speaking about, my dear respected brothers and sisters, that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was expounding upon the virtues of the day of Jum'ah. And he considered that Adam alayhi salatu was salam coming down from the Jannah on the face of the earth as a virtue. Yawm al Jum'ah. So Adam alayhi salatu was salam, a debate ensued between him and Musa alayhi salam. And Musa alayhi salatu was salam more or less was blaming him. You are the one who caused, caused, me, to come, caused me and everyone else to come on the face of the earth. And Adam alayhi salatu was salam asked Musa, How many years before I have been created was the Torah revealed? And he said, Many years before. Right? More or less something like 500 or 1,000 years before. A lot of years, Adam Ali, Musa alayhi salatu was replied 
So Adam alayhi salam, he answered and he said, Are you blaming me for something that has been written so many hundreds of years before I have been created? Our Prophet Adam alayhi salatu wasalam answered this way and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Fahajja Adamu Musa. Adam alayhi salatu wasalam won the debate against Prophet Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. So there is hikmah in many things that we may see that externally or apparently, my dear respected brothers and sisters, that it may not, be, it may not seem as a merit. But indeed it is a merit that on the day of Jum'ah, Adam alayhi salatu wasalam came down on the face of the earth. And on the day of Jum'ah, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Yawm al will occur. Yawm al will occur on the day of Jum'ah. Which is something of, although it is something to be feared, which we will talk about inshallah. But my dear respected brothers and sisters, without Yawm al occurring, how will the believers enter into the Jannah? How will the believers enter into the Jannah? And this is why sometimes we hear the, the hadith of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who recites ayatul kursi after the far salah, after the salah, salah salatul maktuba, then they will enter into paradise. But the question arises, how will we enter paradise and we are living? One salah after another salah, I am reciting ayatul kursi, but where is Jannah? So the commentators mentioned, my dear respected brothers and sisters, that of course you can't go to Jannah yet, inshallah, but recite Ayatul Kursi, immediately when you die, then you will enter into Jannah. So this is the virtue of reciting Ayatul Kursi after the Far Salah, inshallah, after our Salah, five times daily Salah, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said, nothing prevents us except death. So when we die, inshallah, we will enter into the Jannah. So, subhanallah, yawm al qiyamah, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam also mentioned a virtue of the day of Jummah and the day of Jummah is so such a great day that Yawm al Qiyamah will actually occur on that day. My dear respected brothers and sisters, in Mawlana Abdul Salam's last khutbah, Damud Barakatuhu, inshallah, he made mention of a very important message that came to us from Hazrat Mawlana Yusuf Mutala Damud Barakatuhu about dreams about the Dajjal. And today, inshallah, we touch a bit upon our attitude with regards to things of these nature. The nature of how we view things like Yawm al how we view Ya'juj and Ma'juj, how we view Ashab al-Kahf, and the message that Mu'an Abdul Salam Dhamad Barakatuh who mentioned to us, my dear respected brothers and sisters, is that Hazrat was very, very worried. Hazrat Mu'ana Yusuf Mutala Dhamad Barakatuh was very, very worried about the dreams that people are having. Recently, we would have known about a fire that occurred in Medina Munawwara, a hotel. And many people were trapped inside that fire and they died. There are many things that are going on in the entire world, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Coldness, when it's not supposed to be cold like that. Seasons are changing, weathers are changing. Different types of little adabs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is causing to happen throughout the entire world. What is our attitude, my dear respected brothers and sisters? How do we view these things? How should be our attitude? We go back to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We go back to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to his aqwas and his statements and his attitude. And we will know how we should behave, how we should view things, how we should prepare, prepare ourselves. Hadrat Zainab bin Tujash, she said that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came into her room fazi'an. He was frightened. He said, Wailu lil Arabi min al fitnati qariqata raba. He said, Wo anta the Arabs of the fitna that have just appeared. He said, Kad futiha min radmi ya'juj wa ma'juj hakada. He said, Has opened from the seal of ya'juj and ma'juj. And he made a, a circle with his finger, his thumb, 
The hadith mentions he made a circle with his thumb and his forefinger. Ya'juj and ma'juj. And today, my dear respected brothers and sisters, people speak about Ya'juj and ma'juj and we like to hear about Ya'juj and ma'juj. And people are fascinated by Ya'juj and ma'juj. People are fascinated with stories about Imam Mahdi. People are fascinated with stories about the Dajjal. And we are fascinated about stories about Ibn Sayyad. And different things about Yawm al Qiyamah. The question is, my dear respected brothers and sisters, along with that, along with the fascination of those stories, do we have the same attitude that Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam taught us that we should have about these things? Do we consider ourselves that, mashallah, we have made it, we are Muslims, and you know there are so many people out there, they are going to burn in the fire of hell, and some of them burn in this very world, and they will burn in the fire of hell, but alhamdulillah with the deen of Islam, inshallah we should not burn. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has given the promise to the believers, inshallah, we will go to Jannah, the believers will go to Jannah. But Nabi alayhi salatu was salam also at the same time has taught us, my dear respected brothers and sisters, O oh believers, do not think that you have it made. Do not think that you have it made and do not think that the platter is spread out for you on the dastakhan in Jannah. The table spread will be spread out for you in Jannah and you will eat from the, the liver of the fish and you will eat from the bounties of Jannah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will feed you. Do not feel that you have it made on the face of the earth. When you, have, when you feel that you have it made, that means shaitan is beguiling you. Shaitan is, is tricking you. Shaitan is making you believe that everything is all well and good. But my dear respected brothers and sisters, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam taught us as believers that we cannot think and our attitude cannot be that we have it made, mashallah. And I have my shroud that is prepared and I will die as a believer and inshallah I will go to Jannah. We do not know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do with us. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned to us that Qiyam al-Sa'a and the sending of me as a messenger is haqada. And he said the two fingers. And the two fingers, my dear respected brothers and sisters, the index finger and the, the, the middle finger and the index finger is very close. But from since the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has left this world, to us it seems like, wow, so many years have passed. So many years have passed and it seems like we have a lot of life to live. We have a lot of life to live and we are making preparations for our children. We are making preparations for our children and then probably we will think about our grandchildren. And like this, my dear respected brothers and sisters, subhanallah, People prepare with regards to bank accounts. People prepare with regards to houses. People prepare with so many different things. And they will ensure that when I write my will, you see this child that is not being nice to me, I will knock him off. And this grandchild of, and this child of his, he will also be knocked off on account of that. So far, human beings think, my dear respected brothers and sisters, and human beings worry about their inheritance and worry about the worldly things no man will set a foot in my house no child shall set foot in my house although not notwithstanding it has eight rooms let them go outside and understand what life is about my dear respected brothers and sisters these are worldly things that we are speaking about these are worldly benefits this is money, this is wealth. These are tangible things that we can see. Do we not as human beings worry about when we die, what will happen to us? Do we as human beings not worry that when I pass away and I close my eye, I wonder if my son or my daughter will raise a hand and do for me? I wonder if anyone will, raise, will come and visit me in the cemetery? My dear respected brothers and sisters, Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, he came into the room of Hazrat Zainab bin Tujash and he was worried about Ya'juj and Ma'juj. 
And mind you, that is something for us to be worried about. Nabi alayhi salatu was salam on account of yaqeen and iman. He was worried about Ya'juj and Ma'juj. He was frightened about Ya'juj and Ma'juj. And mind you, he was very frightened for the Ummah, for you and I. He was very frightened for everyone who, was, who is on the face of the earth right now about Ya'juj and Ma'juj. And today people are fascinated. People are fascinated about Ya'juj and Ma'juj. But are we worried about what will be our, our affair if we see Ya'juj and Ma'juj? What will be the affair of our children if they see Ya'juj and Ma'juj? What will be the affair of our Muslim brothers and sisters and the children of our Muslim brothers and sisters if they see Ya'juj and Ma'juj? Nabi alayhi salatu was was afraid. My dear respected brothers and sisters, what is our attitude? This is what we have to ask ourselves. And if our attitude is not close to Nabi alayhi salatu was it means that we have to change our attitude. And we have to become close to the attitude of Nabi alayhi salatu was We have to become close to the attitudes of Nabi alayhi salatu was And if our feelings is not like that, understand that we are very far away. Understand that we are very far away and we have to make ourselves close to those feelings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam has told us of signs, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when the ayahs of the Holy Quran is recited, then the hearts of the believers start to tremble. It starts to quake. Why did Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam? And we have to ask ourselves, is it that when we hear the ayahs of the Holy Quran, we are, mashallah, I love this reciter. Subhanallah, brothers, do you hear how he is sounding? No one else can recite Quran like him. MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah, thum, alhamdulillah. That is good. But what about the meaning of what the reciter is reciting, my dear respected brothers and sisters? Iktaraba linnasi hisabuhum wa hum fi ghaflatim mu'ridun. The yawmu sa'a, qiyamu sa'a is close, but people are in neglect. Mu'ridun, they are rejecting. Why? Because of the dunya, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Because of the dunya. Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, some, gray stra some strands of gray hair was seen upon him. The sahabas inquired, O Messenger of Allah, you have, be qad shibta, you have become old. In one narration he said, Qad shayyabatni suratuhud wa akhawatuha. Suratul Hud and its sisters, those all Suratul Mursalat, all the, all the ayahs and the surahs that speaks about Yawmul Qiyamah has caused Nabi alayhi salatu was to become grey. Why? On account of the stress and the grief of understanding Yawmul Qiyamah. On account of the stress and the grief of Yawmul Qiyamah, my dear respected brothers and sisters. So we have to ask ourselves, how am I preparing Nabi alayhi salatu was salam said, Badiru bil amali. Hasten towards good actions. Hasten towards good actions before six things. And he counted out six things. From amongst them was Dajjal. From amongst them was Dabat al Ard. From amongst them was the rising of the sun from the west, my dear respected brothers and sisters. These things Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has listed out. But he didn't only list it out in a manner of fascination. Nabi alayhi salatu was salam listed it out in a manner of worry and concern. We have to be worried. How will I fear? How will my children fear? And subhanallah, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, the ayahs of the Holy Quran, he did not treat it lightly at all. وَأَنذِرْ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ the monks that we see when we go Makkah and Medina, Nabi alayhi salatu was salam walked upon them. He went upon the Mount of Safa, according to one narration, and he called all his family members. Ya Bani Lu'ay, Ya Banu Hashim. He called different tribes and he warned them. He warned them and he said, listen, ask me from what I can do for you now and today. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I cannot promise you. I cannot promise you what I can do for you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And my dear respected brothers and sisters, who are we speaking about? We are not talking about a, a, a wali Allah. 
We are talking about the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who narrated the tradition that on a day of judgment, people will go to our father Adam alayhi salatu wasalam first and he taught us of the answers of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam and he knew the answer that all the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam would give. Go to Prophet Ibrahim, go to Khalil Allah, go to Kalim Allah, go to Ruh Allah. And then it would be go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam knew that fully well. Because he is the one who narrated it to us, my dear respected brothers and sisters. And he, has, he had more yaqeen than you and I and has more yaqeen than you and I. That that is surely going to happen. What is surely going to happen? He is going to be the one who will bow down in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is an account of shafa'at of Nasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that yawm al qiyamah will begin. That yawm al qiyamah will begin. But he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, my dear respected brothers and sisters, he didn't lay back and say, Subhanallah, I am the Nabi who will be carrying liwa ul hamd. I will be waving the flag on the day of judgment. He did not lay back on his bed, my dear respected brothers and sisters, his comfortable bed. And forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the nights because قَدْ غُفِنَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ وَمَا تَأَخَّرَ On the contrary, my dear respected brothers and sisters, one night when Nabi alayhi salatu was salam did not wake up for the tahajjud salah, he called upon his wife. What's the difference? What's the difference? Why is it that I did not wake up? The, his wife said, O Messenger of Allah, I doubled your bed on this night so you would have a comfortable rest. Because she was a wife, she was a comfort, she was a wife who looked out for her husband and she was looking out for the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam said, don't do that. It disturbed me from waking up in the night and crying to Allah and performing my ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam knew better than you and I. قَدْ غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِن ذَنْبِهِ وَمَا تَأَخَّرَ but Nabi alayhi salatu was salam would wake up in the night and he would cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many a times he would, be, he would be seen crying and his beard would be soaking with tears, my dear respected brothers and sisters. And what? غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِن ذَنْبِهِ وَمَا تَأَخَّرَ We, my dear respected brothers and sisters, we do not have that guarantee. We do not have that guarantee that our sins are forgiven. We do not have that guarantee our sins are forgiven. So how will we fear with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How will we fear with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we go in the grave, my dear respected brothers and sisters? And the grave is right there. And for those who see the Dajjal, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to see him, it is something that Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam, he said, فَالدَّجَّالُ شَرُّ غَائِبٍ The Dajjal is the most evil of things that is going to come, my dear respected brothers and sisters. And Hadha Imran ibn Hussain, he heard the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that there is nothing between the creation of Adam and the qiyam us sa'a, um, an affair that is more greater than that of the Dajjal. An affair that is more greater than that of the Dajjal. So no problem, my dear respected brothers and sisters. We can learn and we can try to find out about the characteristics of these things. Why? So that it will increase our iman. And so that we will be worried like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear respected brothers and sisters. We have to be worried and this is the point. Do we have the concern like the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the sahabas? Or do we think that we have it made and we do not need to perform extra salawat? Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, he surely did mention to a companion, you do not need to increase upon the five times daily salah. You do not need to increase upon it. But my dear respected brothers and sisters, how do we know that our five times daily salah is sufficient to be accepted in the sight of Allah when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, every salah that we perform, it has a certain level of acceptance in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do not know, my dear respected brothers and sisters, if it was accepted or if it is thrown like a dirty rag in our faces. All the fast that we do, we do not know, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, he asked the companions, do you know who is a bankrupt person? They said, yes, a bankrupt person is a man who has no wealth, no dinar, no dirhams, wala mata'alahu. 
No, no, no wealth. He has no couch. He has no car. He has nothing. That is a bankrupt person. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said a bankrupt person, my dear respected brothers and sisters, will be that individual who on the day of judgment he comes with the world of good deeds. The world of good deeds. Song, fasting, Monday and Thursdays. And performance of salah, tahajjud, giving zakat, giving charity, building masajid. But he did so much of wrong, he hurt so much of people. He hurt so much of people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take the deeds of this individual and give it to the deeds of give it to the people who he did wrong. How do we know, my dear respected brothers and sisters? We just pass day and day out. We hurt people in our lives, Ma'ad Allah and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. We do not know if it is the deeds of Laylatul Qadr will go to them. We do not know if it is the deeds of our five times daily salah will go to them. So therefore, how can we have an attitude of complacency? How can we have an attitude that, mashallah, I have it made? How can the masajid be empty, my dear respected brothers and sisters? How, subhanallah, we see haramain sharifain. Recently, mashallah, someone coming from Umrah has mentioned it is very much filled. It is very much filled, subhanallah. Not only in Ramadan, in Ramadan it is very much filled. Haramain Sharifain, Mecca, Medina, Hajj, subhanallah, even more filled. And throughout the year, alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah, we praise and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting it into the chests of the believers to perform this great amal, my dear respected brothers and sisters. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq. Ameen. But Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, he also mentioned to us, my dear respected brothers and sisters, that close to Qiyam al-Sa'a, Muslims will be in multiple. Muslims will be in millions and billions. He said, you will be, you will be in plentiful, plentiful. But, Ghutha'an ka is sail as we have mentioned before, in one tradition, Nabi alayhi salatu was salam has mentioned. We will be like the dregs, my dear respected brothers and sisters, said Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The question is, my dear respected brothers and sisters, Ma'adhallah, in the sight of Allah, are we from amongst the dregs? In the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, are we from amongst the dregs? Or in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, are we from amongst the awliya Allah and the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those people who are good and those people who when they raise their hands, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept them. My dear respected brothers and sisters, we do not know. Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, he has mentioned to us about the last man who will enter into Jannah. The last man who will enter into Jannah. Easy, more easier said than done, my dear respected brothers and sisters. That if I am the last man to enter into Jannah, Alhamdulillah, I will thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I have entered into Jannah. You know why we will say it like that, my dear respected brothers and sisters? Because we don't know the pain of the fire of hell. We don't know the pain of the fire of hell. We do not even know... Many of us do not even know the, the pain of the fire of this world, my dear respected brothers and sisters. So we have no regard for the pain of the fire of hell. But the point that we are making is our iman must be and yaqeen must be of such level whereby we feel the fire of Jahannam. More than the fire of Jahannam, beyond the fire of Jahannam, we feel the vapor of Jahannam. That we will do good deeds that will cause us to stay away we will be such believers whereby we do not even want to feel the vapor of the fire of Jahannam, my dear respected brothers and sisters. But today we can raise our hands high and say, Me, O oh Allah, if I am the last one out of Jannah, inshallah, at least I will come out of Jannah. My dear respected brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, thumma Alhamdulillah, in its proper perspective, probably that might be a good answer, at least out of Jahannam, out of the fire of hell, sorry, is better than being in it forever. And that is also something good. And Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, he also smiled on, when he narrated this tradition on account of the smiling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about the last man who will come out of the fire of hell. And he will tell Allah, Oh Allah, you have taken me out of the fire of hell. Please put me closer to the Jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be amazed. You know, I have taken you out of the Jahannam, the fire of hell. And you are asking and asking. And the story goes on, my dear respected brothers and sisters. It's a long story, subhanallah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was amazed at this individual. 
You promise that you will not ask anymore if I move you away from the jah Jahannam. And you, you promise that if I put you, if I turn your face to the Jannah, you will not ask for anything more. But you keep asking. And then this individual kept asking until he said, Oh Allah, just carry me to the door of Jannah. And then the individual, he stared for a long time. And then he said, Oh Allah, I cannot stand seeing everybody playing in jah Jannah. I want to go into the Jannah also. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala smiled. Smiled on an account of this. Nabi alayhi salatu was salam smiled. And my dear respected brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eventually entered this individual into the paradise. My dear respected brothers and sisters, we do not know if this individual is myself or yourself. We do not know who this individual is. But we have to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day and night, my dear respected brothers and sisters, that he enters this into the Jannah without entering us into the fire of hell. Because we, my dear respected brothers and sisters, we cannot handle the fire of hell. And as we have mentioned, Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, he will not go into the fire of hell. Nabi alayhi salatu was salam is promised Jannah. But he cried. He cried for you and I. He cried under the musalla every night, my dear respected brothers and sisters. He woke up and his foot, his foot became swollen during the ibadat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, our feet have to start to swell, my dear respected brothers and sisters, in doing the ibadat of Allah. Because Hazrat Mawlana Yusuf Mutala Damud Barakatuhu, he was worried, are we going to face the Dajjal? And are we reciting Surah Al-Kaf? You open Surah Al-Kaf, and the length of it, we could just close the Quran, if we are not accustomed to reading Quran. But we have to recite Surah Al-Kahf, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Because Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said, if we meet the Dajjal, recite the first 10 ayats, it will, be a, it will be a help for us. It will be an aid for us against the Dajjal. Surah Al-Kahf is a bit lengthy. So subhanallah, those who cannot recite the entire Surah Al-Kahf, recite the, the first 10 surahs and the last, the first 10 ayats and the last 10 ayats, my dear respected brothers and sisters. But this is one surah, from the 114 surahs of the Holy Quran, we should try to be reciting at least a juz of the Quran every day, my dear respected brothers and sisters. We owe it to Allah. We owe it to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We owe it to do extra ibadat, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Do not suffice upon minimum. Do not, suff do not be complacent. Why? We do not know how we will fear. We do not know if we meet the Dajjal. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam has mentioned many worrying things about the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Many worrying things about the Dajjal. And my dear respected brothers and sisters, we better pray and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam that he protect us from the fitness of Dajjal. Because Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, he as a Nabi sought refuge from the fitness of Dajjal. So these are few things that we can do my dear respected brothers and sisters to protect us from the fitness of Dajjal, to protect us from any type of fitna. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my dear respected brothers and sisters, give me and you the tawfiq to have that yaqeen like the Nabi alayhi salatu was salam and sahabas, like Yawm al Qiyamah was really in front of them. Jannah and Jahannam was really in front of them, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was in front of them. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. His face so beautiful bestowed with grace my heart just yearns to be